I was at UConn the other day. I was at UConn. And man, let me tell you something. I told those kids, man, it's, it was so easy. It was so easy to give the message that I wanted to give. And somebody was like, well, why was it so easy for you to give it at UConn, but it wasn't easy for you to give it to the other one? And the reason why it was so easy for me to give it at UConn, because the banner said 2023, they just won a championship. Oh, y'all missed what I just said. Yep. Oh, it's so easy when you go and you talk to a team where they got the same coaching staff that just won a championship. They got the same blueprint that just won a championship. They got the same gym and practice facility that won a championship. Like everything. I said, you know what's hard? What's hard is going to some D1 program where they ain't won a championship in the last 10 years and I got to convince them they could do it. I'm just being real. I'm a, I'm a human. So when I go somewhere, they ain't won a championship in the last 20 years and I got to sit there and tell you, you can do it. Right? But there's no evidence. There's nothing on the wall to say you can do it. The coaching staff hadn't done it. In that gym, they hadn't won a championship, no confederate, nothing come down. And so I'm so geeked today because if we get back to God's way and get back to God's program and get back to God's playbook, like all he does is win. So when we don't win, it means we follow on somebody else's playbook. We're not following God's. And this was the financial week. I ain't make it up. I think it was Candace that said we need to do it. The need of them said we need to do it. I, I ain't even picked the speakers. I just was, I just got up at five o'clock in the morning and was listening and was getting rebuked. And God was saying, Eric, I need you to do it exactly like I tell you to do it because there are many of us in this room. We have been in this world. We were in this world and of this world. And we got beat. And it's like, aren't you tired of doing it that way? And it's not working. So Trap started it off where he talked to five talent, two talent, one talent. So we're going to go there today. But before we go there, let's just, I just want to go here. So number one, if you're broke, and we talked about this last week, broken. And broken just means you're not following the blueprint and we're not getting the results that we're supposed to get. So if you are broke in, it's because one of two reasons. When you look at the talents, one of two things happen. You are about your own business. I want to say that one more time. I'm about to help somebody. I'm about to help you. Number one, you are about your own business. Or number two, you're not moving the needle or multiplying his money. Praise God. <laughs> All right, we're going to, let me just stop there. I just want to, let's go over the first one first so I can make sense to it. Because some of you are so broken that you don't even hear what I'm saying right now. Like you so broken, it don't even make sense to you. Like it's not making sense. Two reasons why you broke and you never have to be broke again. In your marriage, you're broke because you're about your own business. Just being real, in your child, with raising your kids, the reason why they ain't working out, because you're in your own business. Yeah, I just want to be honest. The reason why your business ain't blow up the way you want it to blow up, because you're in your own business. Right? What? It was five, two, and one. And two, the five and the two, they weren't about their business. They were about their father's business. All right, I want to make this plain. All right, we travel a lot, and I promise you, one of my biggest challenges when we travel is that I don't get the same experience every time I travel. It's the, it's the craziest thing. I can go to a Rich Carlton, and, and I go to one in Miami, go to another one in Cleveland. It could be a different experience. And the reason why it's a different experience is not because of the Ritz Carlton. It's not because of the Marriott's. Like it had nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the person that's representing them. My wife said the other day, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being real. I, I'm at a point now where I just try to be honest, right? And my wife is like, I see what your problem is. I was like, what's my problem? She's like, your problem is when you go, you know, to a hotel or you go to a restaurant and they not, you know, lovey-dovey and that like it bothers you. I said, absolutely, because we are in a business of hospitality, but you're not hospitable. I'm just being real. I told her I am in my feelings. I mean, this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be a, like you went to school for or you got a job to be uh, uh, hospitable, and, but you're not being hospitable. Like, I, I'm confused, sweetheart. And so what I've come to realize is there's a group that comes and gets a job and they are about their father's business. And then there's another group that comes to get a job so they can pay their rent. And so when I go to a restaurant, I, I'm not getting an experience that I want to get. 
because it depends on why you're there. So if you came because you need your rent paid, then you're not going to be about your father's business and you're not doing what you got hired to do. You only there because you're trying to get a check. And now I got to Now I got to walk into my hotel room and, and know that every time I walk into a hotel room, it may not be clean. Why? Because one person is cleaning the room. They, they got a job to clean the room and they take pride in cleaning the room. The other person took the job because they needed money. So now I got to walk into my hotel room and it may not be clean. Let me tell you something. I used to tell folk all the time. You know, I'm the pastor, and so I don't always necessarily, you know, do business right. But when Marie came here and started working here, you know, there was people that was on me like, well, pastor, is she getting paid hourly? You know, is it is it salary? Like, what is it? I was like, I don't know what it is. I just know every time I walk in this joker, it smells clean. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Not only was it clean, it smelled clean. I don't care if it's hourly. I don't care if it's project. I don't care what it is. All I know is she taking pride in this joker because when I walk in here, I don't care if she come an hour and she on her computer. I don't care if she walking around. I don't care. All I know is the end result is that joker clean and it smell clean. All I know is whatever I hired her for, she doing exactly what I hired her for. How you want to pay her, that's your business. I could care less. That don't got nothing to do with me. I just know I hired her. You may have missed it. There is a group of you who are broke and broken because you are about your own business. You about your own business. You in your marriage. Oh, marriage sucks. Ain't nothing wrong with marriage. You just about your own business. And so your marriage ain't working out because you're not married. You got married for a personal reason, not for the reason marriage was designed. Your life, your life, your life broke because you bought your own business. Now listen to me very closely and I could be mistaken, but the last time I checked, he had the, we say he had the power to walk on water. We say he could walk on water. We say he could take two fish and five loaves and feed 5,000, not including men and women, our children and women. It, that's what you said. Uh, he can cast out demons. All of this stuff he could do, but yet the word is clear. He said when he was asked, I came, to, I didn't come to do my, I came to do the will of the father that sent me. Every time he opened up his mouth, he kept saying, it's not me, it's my father. It's not me, it's the one. It's not me, it's not me, it's not me. And most of us are problem. The reason why you broke, because it is me. Everything you do, everything you about is about you. He said, he said, the, the, I come not, I come not to do my will, but the will of the father who sent me. I promise y'all, that's correct. That's the only place I want a vacation. That's it. Dubai, that's correct. I don't like going no other resorts. Why? Because I get to the resort and you want to have, listen to me. We got to stop following the world, y'all. Uh, some, some young lady asked me the other day, we were in Cleveland. I went to Starbucks because my wife was getting her hair done. So I was like, all right, let me go to Starbucks. I don't really go to Starbucks. But I was like, you know what? I ain't got nothing to do. Let me go get something to drink, get the medicine ball, chill. And so I got in the line and I asked her for what I want. And she said, well, we don't have this and we don't have that. And I was like, what do, what do you? It's Monday morning. <laughs> it's Monday at six. What do you have on Monday? Like y'all didn't know Friday y'all ran out? Like I'm confused. Like it's Monday, it's not Wednesday. Oh, we don't have that, we don't have that. What do you have? Then she told me what she had and then I drove up and I was like, can I get some honey? We don't have that. But you know what she asked me for? A tip. You bought your own bit. You couldn't even give me what I paid for. You couldn't even give me what I asked for, but you got a tip. I'm telling you there, those of us, your marriage ain't working out. You looking for a tip. You ain't even showed up to do what you supposed to do. You got a job. You ain't even done your job. You want a tip. And so most of us are broke because you're about your own business. Or number two, you're not moving the needle or multiplying his money. i would never seen that before when I looked at Matthew 25, 14 to 30. When you go home, make sure if you're watching when this thing's off, make sure you read it. I never saw it before. Not only is God asking us to move the needle, he said, multiply my stuff. 
or you going to hell. Multiply my stuff. He said it. He said to the five and the two. He said, well done, thou good at first. Enter into the joy of the Lord. The other way, he said, get out, get out my face and you going to hell. Why? You didn't, you didn't, you didn't just, you didn't move the needle and you didn't multiply my stuff. I gave you my stuff to multiply. The reason why most of you are broke, because when something is put in your hands, you don't multiply it. It ain't no better in your hand than it was when it wasn't in your hand. But you're still looking for a tip. You're looking for a tip and you ain't even done your job yet. You ain't done what you're supposed to do yet. Why? Because you're not working for the master. You're working for yourself. I'm like, what? You can, I, what? She asked me, would you like your room clean? What kind of question is that? Would I, that you getting paid to clean rooms. Why are you asking me if I want my room clean? Oh, somebody talk back to me. What's up, Troy? <laughs> it's been about 20 years since I seen my brother. Come on. We want to tip before we do. Can, I, I want to help you. We want to flip this thing around. Stop being about your business. And if you can't move the needle, I, I, I've, been do, I've been a supervisor for about 20 years. I am amazed that people will take a check for work they ain't never done. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that people will take. But then when you, when you challenge a person to do what they got paid for, now they got something to say. You weren't saying nothing when you was getting a check and you wasn't doing, you wasn't coming to work. You wasn't doing what you were supposed to do. We, you, we had no discussion, but now I'm holding you accountable for what? And now you got an attitude. You didn't have no attitude when you was getting free money. You wasn't calling me. It was like, yo, bro, I ain't done nothing in four weeks. Hey, bro, don't even, bring, don't even send me no check. You took the check. You ain't do nothing. Come on, let's go. We go. I'm gonna show you something. It's not yours. It's not yours. So, so, so the, the next one. I want to show you how it works. So God blessed me to be on Instagram, and for whatever reason, He chose you know to bless us with about 2.2 million people. Watch this. This is what I mean. So what happens is, if you go to my page, there are times that you'll see. Like I remember uh, before the world knew who Inky Johnson was. Inky came to us. Uh, and he did something for our, our uh, advantage. And immediately afterwards, Carl, edit, whatever. And we put my man's stuff up on. We put, listen to me very closely, uh, be in this world, but not of this world. Not only did we put it up, we put it up on our main page. I know people who like, they like, yo, this is my page. I might put you on stories, but I ain't putting you on the main page. E, why do, why, why do we put Toby up on the main page? We didn't put him up because we nice. God said, that's my page. That's my page. Your page belongs to me. You put up who I tell you to put up when I tell you to put it up and you're going to be blessed. The reason why some of y'all ain't blessed, you really think because it's in your hands that it's yours. You think because it's your breath that you can sleep in because it's your breath. It's your body. When God has specifically told you to get up in the morning and pray and have worship and then go out and do. You think because it's your bank account, you can spend the money like you. I just gave I was just watching, I don't know what, uh, a sermon uh, and a person who we consider to be, you know, our our pastor and one of our uh, friends that we went to college with, you know, he works with him and he was like, uh, we need to bless the pastor, his pastor's appreciation. I was like, bet. I got there. The Lord told me, look, write him a check for 10 grand. No, I didn't. I didn't flinch. Why? It ain't my money. I can't tell God like 10 grand. You sure? God said 10 grand. And then God said, I have someone against you because you wrote him a check. You lazy. I specifically told you to go to the bank and give it to him cash. You didn't do what I told you. You didn't do exactly what I told you to do. You did what I, you did the essence of what I, but not the specific instruction. The reason why some of you are struggling, you think because it's yours, it's yours. It ain't yours. It's God. He gave it to you. People ask me all the time. You always moving about. You are, this ain't my body. This ain't my voice. This ain't my strength. This ain't my energy. I don't have a schedule. I don't have a life. My life is God's life. Wherever you want me to be, whenever you want me to be there, that's when I'm there. I will sleep when you say I sleep. I will eat when you say I eat. And most of you are broke because you still think it's yours because you have possession of it. It's not yours. 
It don't belong to you. It belongs to God. You are borrowing it. Use it appropriately. You broke because your life is your own and you do what you want to do when you want to do it and what you feel like doing. Let me tell you what God told me to tell some of y'all. If you would treat him like you treat your children, you, you would be blessed. Some of y'all, your, ba- your baby can't cry without you. <laughs> well, Jamie, I'm going to make sure. I'm just being real. Some of y'all, your child, uh, if, they, if they act like they're not having fun, you right on top of it. Oh, you're not having, what's wrong? I just want to make you happy. I'm just being real. I praise God for y'all. This is a whole new generation. We didn't have no identity when we was kids. <laughs> I praise God for y'all. Y'all take it to the next level. We ain't had no identity as kids. <laughs> no, you weren't even supposed to know you was in the room. <laughs> I thank God for the new parents because at least your kids got an identity. I ain't mad at that. But I'm saying to you, I'm not telling you to shift, but I'm saying if you was as much concerned about God as you were about your child, every time your child cry or are discomforted, I ain't never seen a generation where the kids get to decide what they eat. This is y'all, this is a blessed generation. <laughs> My mom, we wouldn't get no options. <laughs> like when nobody asking you if you liked it or not. <laughs> and nobody wouldn't even ask you if you was going to eat it or not. I'm just being real. <laughs> they, I don't even care if you didn't like it. You, you, you didn't have an option if you wasn't going to eat it. If it was cooked and it was put on a table, you could not get up from the table until they told you to get up from the table. Praise God. I, I praise God for this new generation. Ours might have been abuse. Y'all looking out for them. Amen. It might have been abuse. I'm just saying, I remember being a kid. You just couldn't run in the refrigerator and just go in the refrigerator and start taking stuff out of it. I'm just being real. We had snacks. You just couldn't eat a snack when you wanted to. That snack was for Monday and it was for school. (laughs) Like you just couldn't eat it at noon at the crib. If you didn't go to school, you couldn't. I'm just saying, I'm not mad. I'm not telling you to change the way you treat your kids. But I'm saying, can God get on the same level as your kids? Why are you so concerned about them, but you're not concerned about the God that created your child? I'm just saying, if you're tripping because your child crying, you should trip that God's crying. If if you're tripping that your child's feelings hurt, you should trip that the creator's feelings is hurt. Let's make it fair. (laughs) Let's let God get on the same level as your child. We're not saying shift it. We're not saying treat your child a different way. I'm just saying, let's let's make it even. Or, Or your spouse that you love. Now, when they tell you to stop, drop, and roll, you stop, drop, and roll. Can we stop, drop, and roll for God? And so God said, no, 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 no. I'll never forget Quincy uh, called me, cute DZ called me uh, Philly. I was on the radio in Philly, and they shut it down for a whole hour. And I called CJ, said, see, call Toad. We about to, we about to, we about to use this hour to introduce the world to Toad. We're going to play at least one or two of Toad's songs while we're on the radio. Why? Because God says, I'm giving you an hour, but it ain't your full hour. I need you to, I need you to, I, I'm about to blow Toby up and I need you to be the person that's responsible for his. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying to y'all? Jamal King. God said, I need you to put Jamal on your page. There are people I don't even know randomly. I just put them up. And I, why? Because it's not my page. It just got my name on it for a short period of time. Because one day the name Eric Thomas, this individual, I'm not even going to be on this earth. Let's go to the next one. I just want to help somebody. Uh, so, so, so the Bible says, and he, he said, uh, he who had received five talents went and uh, at, at once. And oh, I love it. Yeah. Can you see the time and the sense of urgency here? <laughs> the one that was given five talents went at once. You still, you still think you still, you still playing God. You, you still, you, your football is important to you. Work is important to you. You still think you got an option when it comes to your urgency and what God tell you to do. There's some old school stuff. This don't apply. This old test, it don't apply now. But back in the day when your parents said something, like it, it, it was at once. It was at once. It's been real. The way we do it now is like, well, he does. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm like, wow, praise God. Where did the come let us reason together at three come from? That's beautiful. I'm like, I love what God is doing through you and your child. And then it's like, no, we're not doing it. What happened? Well, my child don't want to go. Oh, praise God. It's not, this is not, this is not what God is saying. It's no, you don't get an option. He said he gave one five times and he went at once. Look at the time frame and traded with them. And he made five talents 
Come on, talk back to me. He made five talents more. So also he went and had the two talents made, two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug his in the ground and hid his master's money. Hmm. I want to take my time today. I want to take my time. So he also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I, I knew you. <laughs> See, this is the problem. You go into church and you don't really, we don't really know God. Come on, it's the problem, y'all. This is just the, it's the whole religion thing, and it's just sickening. It's just so sick how religion has destroyed the real essence of the creator and who he is and what we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to be doing. People look at me like, man, the Lord is blessing you. Why? I, I, at once. At once, God. I land three days, go next day, go another plane, come home. If you tell me, come home. Like, why you even come home for 24 hours? Don't make sense. I don't know. But something about to be happening in Lansing that I need to be here for the 24 hours. I don't even want to, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to miss what he want me to do. I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. <laughs> And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here. (laughs) You have what's yours. But his master answered him, you wicked and lazy man. You knew I reap where I have not sown. (laughs) You know that. You should know that about me. You know I gathered where I have not scattered seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. I don't let that word slip. Invested. And at my coming, I shall have received what was my own with interest. God is requiring you not to take what he gave you and give it back the same way it was. Now, there's there's all kind of crazy circumstances, but 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 when God gives us our wives, they should we they should be better in our hands than they were when they weren't in our hands. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Now, you a teenager, you're going to pick this up. I'm talking about you a grown man. You t- your wife should be better in your hands, not worse. Every time I see my wife's father, when we see him, I walk in with a sense of pride. Like, I know what you said about me, but you, it's obvious. Just look at her life. It's obvious. It's obvious her being with me. The Lord is blessed by his grace. It's obvious. Look at your grandkids. It's, come on, it's obvious. Come on, look at the church. This guy gave me this with Bethel Seven Day Adventist Church. It was about 35. Look at, look at what happened in our hands. It's, we supposed to, if we start with 30 people, we're supposed to look here online. We're supposed to give it back to him with investment. How when he came and gave it to me, when he had a couple dollars in the bank, we're a seven figure church. Give it back. He said, when you touch it, I'm, I'm coming back. And when you touch it, it better not be like it was when I gave it to you. I want you to invest it. <laughs> huh? You're not hearing what I'm saying. Our relationships, they should be, we should be better with the people we hang with. Now, that's why I, I, you think you better. I don't think I'm better. I know I'm not, but that's why I don't want to be in it because I'm already drama. I grew up in drama. I don't need no more drama. I'm good. Y'all do your drama thing. I grew up in it. I'm not interested. I was birthed in drama. My mom and dad ain't talking to this day. I've been in drama my whole life. I'm, I'm, some of the stuff that happened to me is a result of the drama. Huh? Huh? I say it all the time. I don't say it because I'm saying I want it to happen, but me and my mom, my real father, my mom, we ain't got no Ola Mill. We don't got the Ola Mill boy. <laughs> Well, yeah, they still don't talk like that. I, this, I'm a product of drama. I, as an adult, I don't want no more. So if you want drama, I'm not mad at you. Just go somewhere and do your drama thing. Have a good time. Have a drama party. Get the drama hat, the shoes to match. I'm just not into it. I've had enough drama. I grew up in drama. My grandma had 14 kids living in object poverty. I just thought it was poverty. They said, no, it was worse than poverty. I'm like, is this something wrong? Worse than that? Absolutely. We grew up in it. We grew up in the Herman Garden. We grew up in it. We grew up where you can't change the heat. It's just whatever it is. The we grew up trying to open the window and make the balance boy the window with the heat. <laughs> 
We grew up throat, nose, bleed, hurt because you can't balance the two. Huh? I grew up like that. I don't want it now. Let's go to the next one. I'm sorry. Let's, re- re- let's reverse engineer this real quick. I want to help you. I want to reverse engineer the way to wealth using the key man formula. So the five and the two are the key man. The five and the two are the what? Oh, come back. Talk back to me. The five and the two are the what? Good. Watch this. The first one, know your master intimately. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Before you take the check for the job you want or the lifestyle you want, Don't take the check until you know your master intimately. For I knew you were hard. Why why did you think that? But the other two didn't think that. It always amazes me how you can have one person, but multiple people have multiple perspectives about the one person. Like where you get that? Where where did you get I was hard from? Where did you get? where, where, Where made you dig it in the earth where we got two others that went instantly and doggone did what they needed to do and gave me triple my money back? So I want you to do me a favor. As a human, I want you to before you take that money or before you take that blessing or before you take that stuff, I want you to know the master and know him intimately. So you ain't on no dumb stuff talking about I knew you were hard and I knew you didn't reap where you sowed and I knew you. What? What? Where you get that from? How you interpret that like that? Number two, when you know his business, I need you to go work passionately for him. Ah, I just said something and you missed it. The reason why you broke is because you took the job, but you didn't do the job. You took the job and you took the check, but you didn't do. Now you got an attitude and you were, listen to me. I just want to say this. This is a bonus for those of you who are takers. This is a bonus. What is a taker? A taker is a person that take the money, but you don't do what you said you was going to do with the money. Or you don't do what the master told you to do. I want to say this to takers. Be careful. Be careful because when you're in a non-mutual relationship, it ain't hard for the person who is the giver to take, pull the plug. I'm just saying, if the majority, if you're in relationships and they're not mutual, but you loving what you're getting, you might wake up one day and the master coming back. Huh? One got five, one got two, one got one, and then there was a period of time. But eventually the master came back and rewarded them. You might be getting free money. You may not be working for what you said you was going to work for. But I just want you to know if you're a taker, judgment day is coming. I just want you to know that if you ain't doing what you're supposed to do, at some point the master's going to come back and he's going to take what you have and then he's going to give it to the one that's already got and so do me a favor. Number two, do me a favor. Don't just know your business. Work passionately for his business. Know who he is. And then once you know who he is or who she is, once you know who they are. Man, it's so sad, man. I just remember I ain't grew up in the church, but I've been in it since I was 16. It's so funny. The church has gotten to a place now where it's just different. And I'm not mad at nobody because uh, everybody deserves, you know, pay. But the church has gotten to a point as a whole, not individually, collectively, the church has got to a place that if a person ain't getting paid, they not, they not doing no work. It's crazy, y'all. It's crazy. I remember coming up, the elders used to, like, it was just certain things that they just saw it as their church. And when the elders got there and when the deaconess got there, we live in a world right now where people passing by all God's work just to get to his words. You can't count on people to do nothing this day unless you got you can write a check for it. I promise you, I've seen the check written and folks that showed up. They right there. Ain't no check. You don't see them. <laughs> I'm saying be careful. The master's coming back <laughs> and the stuff you taking for free that you ain't doing the work for. <clears throat> he going to pull the plug. But the one who's giving, he said, the one that gave 10 and got 10 back, he said, you did what? You gave back? He took the one from the one and gave it to the one that. Uh, So number one, do me a favor. Don't take from the master without getting to know the master. Don't don't look at God as a gift giver and you just want to come to him for what you could get. Huh? Get to know the master. 
Number two, once you know his business and what he wants you to do, go get him instantly, immediately. Go get him. And then finally, honor him by multiplying everything he put in your hand. It made God look stupid when he gave you something and it's worse when he gave it to you. It's worse off when he gave it to you. I'll never forget our conversation. Pastor, uh, Pastor Doggett was preaching. He was talking about Adam and Eve and what the woman was and what the, fa- the man was. And I was just like, wow, God, it's crazy. Like, I can honestly say that right now in my life, you and Didi got to worry about Didi because I'm not worried about it the way I should be worried about it. I'm about my own business. God, I I repent. I remember going to church, feeling like it was a funeral, having to be honest about the fact that if this was my daughter, I would be disappointed in her man. I'm just being real. I was just like, yo, if if, if Dee Dee was my daughter and I was married to her, I would look at my son and go, you are you are an absolute disgrace. You are a dishonor to everything I taught you and how I raised you. But the cool thing about God is you get to repent. And I repent. I said, God, I'm sorry. Help me out because I got married because of what Didi was doing for me. <laughs> I'm just being real. I'm just like I was homeless, God, and she gave me her allowance. I was homeless and she snuck me in her mom's crib. I was homeless, Lord, and she gave me shelter. Like she protected me. She looked after me. I, I, I only went to college because she told me to come to college. My whole life, Lord, she been my mama. She been my savior. And so I'm just loving, I'm just loving the benefits. <laughs> I'm just loving the benefits. I, after our freshman year, I was like, let's get married. I didn't get married because I wanted to make her life better. I got married because I wanted to make my own life better. I just knew that every time I was with her, it was stable. Every time I was her, we, it, 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 we was moving forward. God say, man, you you left home because of your mama, and now you got somebody being your mama. And then you mad when she say she your mama, but she doing, she know where your social security card is. She know where your birth certificate is. She know stuff that ain't, she ain't got no business knowing. She know more about you. At what point, son, are you going to grow up and honor me? I care about you speaking. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I, I, I I gave you my daughter. What are you doing with her? And I was like, oh, I got it. God just got on me the other day. I was like, yo, I ain't even realized my family, you know what I'm saying? Like they trying to do what they supposed to do. But like, I ain't even realized that like, I am like, I set the tone. Like I ain't even realized I'm on the internet. They on the internet. I'm in the word. They in the word. God was like, boy, if you don't get your brown, you don't get your tail and you don't lead. So some of y'all, God put it in your hand, but it ain't multiplying. Oh, you, you did get the job. Praise God. But you got the job because you need to pay your mortgage. You didn't get the job because you care about God. You didn't get the job because you're trying to do his will. You just want to pay your bills. You got the job for that lifestyle, not for God. God said, if you put me first, you can have me and that. But if you put that first, all you're going to get is that. I'm just saying, aren't you tired of the results that you're getting by not putting God first? And I don't care what happened in your life. That don't got nothing to do with God. That's some religion stuff or whatever. That don't got nothing to do with God. All right, let's go. I'm sorry. I got a whole bunch of them. So I want to I want to I want to give you a word. Let's go to the next one. Uh, it's called a key person insurance, right? A key person. <laughs> At some point in your life, you need to be the five or the two. You need to be God's key person. <laughs> yeah, you need to be a key person. Like for, for most of us, we're not the key person. We're a liability to God. We're a liability. I'm just being real in two ways. One, you're a liability because you ain't hurt nobody or you ain't hurt nothing. That's still a liability. He said, I want interest. So in your brain, you like, well, I ain't doing no wrong and I ain't hurt nobody. And I'm, but you still just neutral. I spit you out my mouth. I'd rather for you to be hot or cold and lukewarm. I spit you out. You are a disgrace to me. You're doing absolutely nothing. I need interest on this. God is asking you to be the key person. You're a liability. A key person, watch this, is insurance and a life insurance policy uh, that a business takes out on its most valuable employee or employees. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. Let's go. So I got, I got key person insurance, y'all. I got it. Nine to five millionaire, I promise y'all. 
Maul was coming to everything, paying for everything. He was doing everything VIP, some kind of way. He was praying that he'd get a better team and he wanted a better company and he hooked up with us. I don't even know how that happened, but I benefited more than he did. I ain't know nothing about real estate. I have, I, I have more real estate properties personally since he's been in my life and then us as a collective more properties than i ever had in my life in a bank account to show how much we the man and brought millions in my life so guess what i gotta have insurance on a dude like this why because if he died my money messed up <laughs> now you missed what i just said like like my my family is black like i'm not talking about daily eating i'm talking about if i die they got the type of properties for us that DD and kids going to keep getting paid from generation to generation to generation. That's a key person. He came in my life and took my life financially and took my understanding of real estate to a whole nother level. He's a key person. Are you a key person for God or a liability? Are you a key person at your job or you just getting a check? My wife said to me all the time, did you do an evaluation? Well, I got to evaluate grown people. You took the check. Do the job. Why well, I got to check up behind you. Now, that's a job. You're not going to pay me to check up behind you. You're going to give me some of your money to check up behind you? My life, my family's life is different. My son's life, my daughter's life. Key person insurance. Let's go to the next one. Key person insurance. I just want to show you. all Key person. I got a whole company that's seven figures, uh, the extreme execution that I started. Moose took it over. And I promise you, I don't, I'm, I'm no, I promise you, I may do something once every three months. All the weekly calls he does, he, he don't call me. Uh, he, he, uh, the, 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 the new assessment I got, I paid over a million. He took care of all that. I didn't come to one meeting. It was just him and Brandon. There's seven figures that come into my family's life. He takes a percentage. We keep 75% of it. I don't have to do any work. Even when he does extreme execution training, he brings it here so I can get out of my bed and just come here for an hour and leave. I'm saying, are you a liability to God or does God got to take some insurance out on you? God was like, hold up, I can't, Enoch, we, I can't lose Enoch. No, 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 do me a favor. He don't die, die like the rest of them. <laughs> ah Enoch don't die like the rest of them. He don't die. That, yeah, you can kill them. They can go with the normal, uh, 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 the time to live and the time to die. It's okay, let them die. No, no, change the rules for Enoch. He'd been walking and talking with me for 300 years. Well, I, if he died, I'd miss our time together. Just bring him straight to heaven. He don't got to go around. He don't go to jail. He don't go around. Just bring him straight to the kingdom. Oh, Moses, just bring him straight up here. <laughs> Moses is an asset. Oh, I'm preaching the Bible. I'm not making up nothing. This is the word of God. Bring him on up here. And as a matter of fact, when Jesus is going through what he's going through on the Mount of Confession, take them back, take Moses back down there to support my son. You're not, he keep person insurance. We can't lose Enoch. <laughs> huh? Huh? We didn't got so caught up on how giving he is and how loving that we didn't became a liability. You just all about yourself. You don't care nothing about how you affect other people and what you do, how it hurt the ministry. All you thinking about is you and you wondering why people ain't flocking around you. You not flocked around because you a liability. And when folks start liquidating, you the first one to go. <laughs> I, can't, I can't let Jamal go. He too much of a blessing to the family. I can't let him go. I want, if I wanted to let C go right now, I couldn't let him go. He too much of, a, he too much of an asset. I can't let him go. I can't let Moose go if I want to. Moose is a Muslim. We don't even share the same religion, but I can't let him go because of his values. We share the same values. <laughs> you are, you are, you want to know why you broke. You are a liability. And it's so funny. You don't even notice that you're a liability. You're so much of a liability. It don't even make sense to you. You're so in your, you so you're in your ignorance that you don't even realize you're a liability. You don't, you can't even figure it out. Like, why is nobody, <laughs> how come I can't? Because <laughs> you don't add value. You take more than you give. You're more of a burden, a hindrance. 
Come on, I told you I want to take my time. Let's go to the next one. Moose that made up some, Moose that took the doggone assessment to the next level. This is the pilot. I ain't had nothing to do with it. Look at the artwork. <laughs> That's enough to make sure corporate, cause I just, Trap just called me E. We were just with Grant Cardone. He had an assessment, but we know about your, we rather for our people to, it's because of Moose. He didn't do it because we homies. He did it because, let's go to the flight, let's go to the flight attendant. Look at the flight attendant. This boy then took this thing to a whole, I didn't even have to get involved. I ain't had to make no phone calls. I had to come to no meetings. I just got to be with my wife while I was being, you are a liability. Even when you're doing what you're supposed to do, you still ain't, somebody still got to work with you and help you. It still work. You might be doing 50% of it, but then I got to come do the other 50. You might be doing 75, I got to come do the other 25. Stuff I ain't even getting paid for. I'm not even, I'm not even benefiting from. I can see if it was something we was doing together and we both was getting paid. I'm not even making no money from it and you dragging me in it. You a liability. But you are a nice liability. You are a loving liability. You are. You are a Christian liability. You are a good person liability. You're not evil. You're just a liability. It's nothing personal. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. The grounds crew. I, he didn't make. I said, what? I thought this was Star Wars. Can I get that uh, uh, T? I thought it was Star Wars. Let's go to the last one. The uh, air traffic control. My, my, my. Huh, look how this boy, look how, look how Mooston took this thing and elevated it. Next slide, please. The opposite of a key man is a liability. That's what a lot of you are. I'm sorry about to say no. I apologize. I have no right to do a percentage <laughs> with my limited time with you. I'm sorry. I do apologize. Amen. Praise God. Uh, B is in the back. Brian is in the back. He took both my cars, took them, cleaned them, brought them back. It was like, Pastor, you good. I'm, I'm, I'm taken care of. Like, you, I want to be a blessing to you. It's just I, I can't always be on the receiving end. I, I said, bro, that was an Escalade and a Jeep. Uh, he's like, no, nah, we good. And I said, okay, cool. I right, love it. Do me a favor, though. Send me an vo invoice for the Jeep. Praise God. I'm glad you're an asset, but I'm not about to be a liability. I'm not about to take advantage of your kindness. You still had to, you still had to clean them. You still had to work. <laughs> I got you. The Escalade is mine. We will let the Lord bless you on that and get you a seed. Jada, she, uh, she, she, I'm not sure what you know I'm saying, like what type of return you're going to get on her Jeep at this point. She's 25. You know what I'm saying? I know she's doing good by the earth, but she ain't, you know what I'm saying? She ain't there yet. Amen. She got, she going to be a mama one day, but she's not, she a princess. She's not, she's not a queen. Amen. Amen. So just give me that. No, I could have easily been the pastor. Like, bro, appreciate it. I got you. I'm going to do what you asked me to do. That favor you asked me to do for you. I got that for you. No, I'm like, yo, I see what you're doing. Yes, blessing. But you're going to be an asset and I'm going to be an asset. Come on, y'all. And what the Lord showed me was we, need, we at least need to be mutual. But what the Bible just showed me with the interest is God ain't even interested in mutual. He want an interest on his stuff. Hallelujah. Praise God. One, one more time. I just want you to see it. Just give me another 10 minutes. I want you to see it. He said, it, watch what he said. He said, master, I knew you to be a heart. Where you get that from? How you interpret that? Cause you're not spending time with the Lord to really know who he is. You ain't spend no time with your employee. You ain't asked nothing about what they want. You just said, I'm, I, I need to get paid 60 grand. You never had no conversation on, yo, you giving me 60 and here's what I'm going to give you. One of my favorite players, and I ain't even like my man for what he played, Tom Brady. I just like him because when he got drafted, he told him, I will be the greatest asset to the New England Patriots ever. And to this day, he ain't. Go back. That's what he said. He said, I don't know who these jokers y'all hired. I don't know who on this football team. But I'm telling you, I will be the best thing that ever happened to the New England Patriots. Why? Because nobody drafted me and y'all picked me up last. Thank you for the opportunity. And I'm about to give you more back. Then you gave me by get man, God didn't bless some of us. You ain't gave God nothing, hardly nothing back. And you got an attitude with the Lord for some dumb stuff you did. That was your dumb decisions. Now you want to put them on the Lord. You weren't supposed to be over there in the first place. You weren't supposed to be connected to that person in the first place. Don't put that on God. That was your decisions. 
You put your foot in it and got burned. Now you want to act like he did something wrong. He didn't do nothing wrong. You did something wrong. Let's go to the next one. We're going to get you out of here. Come on. Let's race through these. You, you are focused on making money. Wrong answer. Your focus should be making the master money and then multiplying his money. I don't know what happened to us, y'all, but we become a selfish receiving. We just like the world. We, every, we, always, we always looking to receive. We're always looking to get something and we don't get it. Now we dogging the person out who did, who was giving you in the first place. Like, how did that person become your enemy? That's the person who. Listen to me. I, I, the Lord has blessed me to be a supervisor. I, I hire people. I don't look to get hired. <laughs> Change your concept. I'm looking to be a blessing. So however God make that man, when people have to pay insurance, I was paying 80%. So they were paying 20 and then my, my advisor was like, let's change it. I was like, well, at least we do 70, but I just, I want to be a blessing. I could easily make people pay more. You could pay the majority of your own. You having kids too? Oh my God. I got to pay for that. I didn't ask people for ins- taxes. I paid tax on the money you made. I didn't even make you pay tax on the money you made. I'm constantly asking master what not what like I'm not looking at when I hire somebody our relationship. I'm looking at our relationship. I'm looking at ours like, OK, you drafted me. You got me off the street. You sent me to college. You 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 you. I don't know how you did it, but you. I don't know how God did it, y'all. Y'all hear CJ talk about my writing on the text message. I don't know how I passed the writing portion of the GED. That wasn't nothing but God. I'm not dumb. I, I, all I know is whoever was grading it, the Holy Spirit just was sitting right there while they was grading it. Like, <laughs> they was like, check, <laughs> pass, he, <laughs> pass. Successfully passed your GED. I can't write today. It's not my, it's not my strength. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you all those hours I put in that I'm not probably could write a little bit better than the average human. Absolutely. Why? I got a master's and a PhD. I, we, we, you know what I'm saying? We had to write, 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 write. But I'm telling you, it was years and years and years of practicing. That, that's not something that I was naturally gifted to do. I wasn't naturally a critical thinker, but God blessed me. And so I said, I will go wherever you want me to go and do whatever you want me to do. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe you so dope and you so sweet that you don't need him in the way you think you need him. So Maybe that's why you just own money and you're not on this. Maybe you forgot what he got you through. Maybe you forgot that if that. Just being real, don't get it twisted. That that human that was in power, had they said yes instead of no or no one said it yes, you wouldn't even be sitting in this room right now. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So you are focused on making money. Wrong answer. Your focus should be making the master money, then multiplying whatever he put in your hands. Let's go to the next one. You are not the focus. <laughs> the master is, the assignment is, take the glory off yourself. Just saying, the glory's on you. You're focusing on you. That's why you're struggling. The one person was focused on the wrong thing. The other two, they knew exactly what to do when they got that bag. As soon as they got that bag, they knew exactly what to do. You didn't hear them say nothing about self. They went and immediately invested that joker. Immediately when he came back, they said, here, I got this for you. And then add that to that. And he said, my, 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 well done. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm going to reward you. Don't get it twisted. Judgment day is coming. Don't get it twisted. I ain't talking about when you die. If you keep taking, 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 one day the person you're taking from going to realize you're taking and you're not benefiting them and they're going to pull the plug. One day the person going to realize this ain't mutual. This is abusive. I'm out. I can't do this no more. So one day people going to wake up. Let's go. Let's go. I'm sorry. You dishonor him with stagnation. You dishonor God by being stagnant or stuck in one place for a long period of time. Come on. If God, if God come to this church and we had 30 members in 19, I'm sorry, 2006. And then he come in 2023. We still got 30, 30 people we ministering to. 
That doesn't glorify God. We don't glorify God when we say we Christians, but our marriage is tore up from the floor. We don't honor God that way. We honor God by having our marriage tight. We honor God by as much as we can having our families tight. We honor God by making our businesses possible. We honor God by being in good health. I'm just being real. I, I honor God. People are like, yo, you what? Y'all went to school together? I was like, yeah, we went to school together. I honor God by not looking like I went to school. <laughs> I'm saying, I honor God by not looking like I've been drinking my whole life and smoking and using drugs I shouldn't use. I honor God by not looking toe up from the floor. But I honor God. I ain't say I was Denzel because I'm not, but I honor God by not looking like it, you talking all that talk about God, but I can't physically see. It don't look like you happy. It don't look like we don't honor God when we not when we have areas of our lives that are not prosperous. We don't honor God. God's not pleased. Yeah, we ain't, it don't make we going, going to hell, but God is not pleased when every part of our life is not booming. Why? Because in Christ, every part of our life should be. <laughs> and if it's not, it means we're not giving him that part of our life. All right, I'm talking to myself. All right, let's go. Okay, so here's a life hack because you're still confused. How to assess if you produce life or death, right? So if you were to leave a place or get replaced, Will you be missed? Oh, I didn't even know he was gone. <laughs> when he leave? <laughs> oh, he ain't been here six months. Oh, I couldn't tell. I'm just being real. I know we don't like to do that in the church, but I'm just being real. Pastor, have you noticed that I didn't even know this? I cried when my grandma died. I didn't cry because it was my grandma. I didn't cry because of my grandma. I actually don't like funerals. And I told my wife, we're going to have to figure something out because I'm not throwing you one. I don't like death. I don't want to be looking at somebody in a casket that somebody made up. I don't want that to be my last memory of you. I want it to be whatever it was when you were alive. I don't do death. I do life. I will die one day, but I don't like death. So why did I go to my grandmother? First of all, I knew my grandma and I know her. I know she wasn't going to have no open casket and be all into that. But number two, I went to my grandmother's funeral because every Sunday my grandmother was on the Breathe University call and my grandma would call me right after the call was over. So we talked weekly. She learned how to FaceTime when she didn't even know how to FaceTime. It would be the funniest thing. I'm looking at her ceiling. She's like, hey, grandbaby, how you doing? I'm like, I'm good, grandma. Where are you? She couldn't get that camera in her face. She couldn't get it right. Every birthday, everything I've ever done in my life, she was there. So I didn't go to the funeral because she was my grandma. I went because I missed her. And for the first few weeks, I played her, I played her audio messages back off my phone. I missed her. Now I ain't trying to be funny. And I know, you know, people who love me going to get upset. Oh, you just being cold. I'm not being cold. Let me just say this. There have been loved ones who've passed. Not saying they weren't great people and they're not missed by somebody. They just, we weren't talking regularly. I only saw them at the uh, funerals and we don't do family reunions. So I saw them at the funeral. Or maybe if my cousin threw something for Thanksgiving, but we don't meet like that. So I, I, I wasn't like, I'm just being real, man. If you're in a place and you're not missed, you better question why you're not missed. If I don't miss you, it means you're not contributing. Some people, I'm like, he ain't going to be here this week. What happened? <laughs> I'm just being real. I'm not trying to be funny. I, I, it's, I, I'm not, you know, some of y'all think I'm judging. I'm not judging. I got favors. I don't have favors. I just got people that are mutual. The cooks don't miss church. They don't miss their post. If they got to go out of town, they leave Saturday night and they come back Friday. If they go to their son's football game, they split up, but somebody's here, then they leave after it's over. I don't love them no more than I love nobody else. They just mutual. They just multiply everything. Oh, you just like the cook. I don't like the cook. I don't know them. <laughs> they way younger than me. I grew up in Detroit, but I don't know them. We was actually together and didn't even know each other. <laughs> they was from the Herman Garden. My people from the Herman Garden. I didn't even know who they, I never met them a day in my life. But it's hard to get rid of people who show up even when they. You always on vacation. <laughs> I'm just being real. You, you, you come and go when you want to. It don't make you a bad person, but you're not about to be in the same. 
You wonder why you're not to get a promotion at your job. It's a reason why. All right, let's go through these. I got a couple more. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get this whole thing out. I'm just going to read the rest. I ain't going to comment. I didn't say that you wouldn't personally miss the money or feel the sting. Hmm. If you represent the one talent, you're going to feel the disappointment in the master and deal with the consequences of his disappointment. And it will hurt. I'm just saying the master ain't hurt because you didn't do. <laughs> so he like, go. You weren't doing nothing any for it. Go. You're going to hell because you didn't like heaven in the first place. You're not going to hell because I'm punishing you. You didn't like heaven. You didn't want to be in my presence. You didn't want to read my word. You didn't really like me. You just liked the gifts that I gave you. So you don't want to be with me anyway. So go where you want to go. Let's go to the next one. I'm sorry. In short, if this happens, you're, you probably were using someone else's resources for your own personal gain. And not for its intended purpose. Just being real. God gave you something. If you, if you, it's probably because you took his money and you did what you wanted to do with it. And you ain't do what he asked you to do with it. I want to show y'all this video real quick. Russell Brunson. I don't know what he worth. They say he a billionaire. This is, this, this is after I finished speaking two weeks ago. This is not before. This is, this is our interaction afterwards right here. Let y'all play that video for me. I just want you to see. I want you to understand that he didn't. Yeah, I want you to see that. Can you read that? Grateful for E.T. joining us today. Let's go. Fire emoji. This is after I spoke. <laughs> this, this is, that's our conversation. After I spoke. What am I trying to tell you? He paid me six figures, but he made eight figures. He didn't hire me because he wanted to pay for my Escalade. He want me and Didi to be able to go on vacation. You got it twisted. You're taking people's money because you think they want to pay your bills. They don't. There's a service they want from you. Nobody trying to pay your bills. Nobody trying to pay your bills. He's not trying to pay my bills. I don't even know if he wanted to pay me that kind of money. But he understood if I give E this and E get on stage, he about to set it up where everybody going to buy the product when I do the pitch. They don't like me. We love Eric Thomas. They like the way I pitch. So you pay me to pitch and I bless you to get to. He, don't, he, not, he not blessing you to do your own thing. He not blessing you for your marriage. I love my wife to life. My wife loved me. But we put God first. Didi was the main one. Like, yo, we got to take these food. We, we got, I got a job now. We got to take these food stamps back. That's why I love her. Y'all think it's just on some no. I love Didi because she got integrity with money. This is not our money anymore. Why are you buying food stamps? What is that saying? You buying food stamps? I'm like, yeah, that hundred for 50. She like, that's like, that. she like, she like, so when you get the food stamps, what you're saying is he lied when he said, I'll take care of the fowls of the air and the lilies of the. So you don't think he going to come through then if you're going to get food stamps. You bringing a curse to our family. You cursing our house right now. You buy hot stuff. Go buy it from the store. You're killing us right now. My wife could have easily been like, yo, we say integrity. That's wrong. We don't need the food stamps no more. The, the intent of, go give them their money back. Tell them to stop giving it to us. Somebody else can use it. A lot of us, we have no integrity when it comes to money. You are taking money that you're not even doing work for. You ain't even doing your job, but you're taking it. But as soon as somebody tell you to do something extra, now you mad. Just use some of the money when you weren't doing nothing for the money not that they're asking you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He said, I come to do the will. You didn't send yourself to this earth. Stop doing God's will, your will, or just your will. Start doing God's will completely. Let's go to the next one. So many of us are focused on paying bills. I just want us to stop. I'm closing. In the name of Jesus Christ, nobody told you you had to pay bills. I feel so sorry for Didi because she's the responsible one. I ain't paid bills. I've probably been about 15, 20 years. I ain't paid no bills. I'm like, put them all on auto. I don't care. She's like, no, I want to watch. Okay, watch them if you miss. I don't care. I'm not on this earth to pay bills. I'm on this earth to change lives. I'm not waking up every day to make sure some note is paid for. I'm waking up every day to hear, well done, thou good and faithful, sir. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We finished, we finished, we finished. I got to a point in my life at a very young age where I stopped paying bills and I realized that he said he will take care of the files of the air and the lilies of the field. I ask you this question, how did bills become a responsibility, a, a priority? How did bills become a, a priority in your life? Start working to prosper the person who's paying you and working unto God. My final one, let him who stole steal no more. Ephesians 4, 20. If you're ready to stop stealing, stop stealing God's time. Care nothing about your little schedule. You need to ask God, where do you want me to be today? Huh? There are days I wake up and God said, I want you, I want you at Sexton. I want you at Everett. Sometimes God wake me up. I want you on this phone call. Sometimes God, I want you here. I want you cleaning these toilets. Sometimes when I wake up, God said, I just want you to spend a day with Didi. Sometimes God tell me, I want you to just me and you alone. I just had a gig and Didi was like, I'm not going. I'm like, you're not going. She's like, no, God says she's not going. This is me and your time. So do me a favor. When you get to the hotel, don't cut no TV on and don't be on no phone. This is me and your time. Let him who stole steal no more. I don't care what it is. Let him who stole steal no more. You're like, God, I'm not going to steal my talent no more from you, my time from you. I'm not stealing nothing from you. If that's you, you're standing right now. God, I just want to stop stealing. And you know, you know where you're robbing God. I'm not asking you just to stand on some emotional stuff. You know the area of your life where you're not giving God everything you could give him. I want you to stand and say, God, I'm not robbing you no more. I'm not robbing you no more, period. I'm going to give you what's yours. You gave me this gift. You gave me this talent. It shouldn't just be used for money. Your, your kingdom should prosper as a result of what you gave me. Does that make sense? I'm about to close. I just want to make sure I'm making sense. The person who gave you the gift should be prospering from the gift he gave you. Other people shouldn't be. We left this church last night. My, my wife, the needed them working. We get in the car. I'm preaching. I'm practicing for my sermon. I'm doing something holy. I'm practicing for my sermon. Diddy was like, who are you talking to? I said, what you mean by that? I ain't on the phone. She's like, no, no, but you having a conversation with somebody. Who you having a conversation with? I was like, I'm getting ready for my sermon tomorrow. She said, your sermon is tomorrow. I'm sitting with you today. This is my time. <laughs> you don't be preparing no sermon. <laughs> we, we are here together. You had all that time without working. You could be working on your sermon. We here together. Like, go ahead and let that go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God will bless you tomorrow. I might not be here tomorrow. This is my time. So when I was working, if you needed to do something, you could have done that. But now, this is what I got married for. I ain't get married to you be in car doing sermons in your head. <laughs> I married you because I wanted us to spend time together. So get up early tomorrow and practice. <laughs> you know, I don't wake up till later. The sun coming up later. So I get up a little later. But as for right now, this is my time. And God is saying, this is my time. This is my time. This, you should be doing this for me. I did all that for you. Can you do something for me? So, Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. We're we done. It's not like we're about to start treating our kids different or our spouse different. or It's not like we're about to start doing nothing different. But what we are going to do different is we're going to start treating you like we treat our spouse. Or how we keep, like, we're so worried about our kids and how, you know what I'm saying? Like, they bored, they hungry, they crying. We need to be concerned. But when are we going to get to the point where, what, how you feel? What, you, what do you want? How, how, how are you feeling about this relationship? Like, Lord, it's not that we need to change how we treat humans, but we do need to treat how we treat you. It's not fair that humans get all of this attention and time and you don't. When my wife, as much as I love her, she's not the producer of my breath. She did not give me my gifts and talents. As much as I love my children, Lord, they are not the... They're not the reason why I live and breathe and have my being. You are. And so in the name of Jesus, we don't want to steal no more. We want to give back to you what belongs to you. Forgive us of our past and help us with our future. 
We love you. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you and adore you. Be with our spouses, our partners, our children, business partners. There's some stuff that we touched and we messed up. Fix it, Jesus. There's some things we said, some things we done. Some of us still have not properly apologized because our pride is so, our ego is so. Help us right now, Lord, to, to, to at least, if we don't do it to nobody else but you, say, I recognize what I did, Lord, and it was wrong. And now I want to start doing right from this day forward. I want to, whatever you give me, whether it's a spouse or a job or children or a car or a house, whatever it is you give me, whatever you put in my hands, whatever is the thing that, 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 that I give the most attention, the most time, the thing that means so much to me that humans know it's important to me. I, I just want to take that energy and toward, put it towards you too. So if I like cooking, I like cleaning, if I like track, whatever it is I love, if I like study, reading, I like tech, whatever it is, God, I want to I wanna direct that same love and time and attention to you. And then everything you give me, I want it to be blessed. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Whatever's crooked, make it straight, Lord. Whatever's broken, mended, whatever's rough, Sand it out for us and smooth it. If it's, our, if it's in our relationship, it's just smooth with our parents, with our siblings, with our spot, with our kids. Smooth that thing out for us, Jesus. If it's in our attitude and the way we talk, whatever's rough on us, smooth. Sandpaper that joker, Lord. Smooth it out. And may the rest of our lives be the best of our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey there, welcome to my channel, Fresh Personal Growth Motivation. Today I speak Overcoming Stress Nation 2024. Immediately afterwards, put my man stuff up on put, listen to very word, not only we put it up. We put it people who like, they like you. This isn't no the why put Toby on because we nice God said that's my face. That's my page and you belongs to me. You put up, you tell, you put up, going to bless the reason why some all blessed you really think because it's not your hands, it's uh, your, you, because it's your breath that sleeps you, it's your breath, your body when God has some morning and pray and have <coughs> worship thing because the money like uh, I was just watching I don't know what is sermon and know our pastor and uh, college with you know works him he was like a uh, bless your pastor appreciation I like me it look go write him check for 10 grand no I did not uh, feelings and why ain't money I cannot tell God like 10 grand you and uh, grand you sure God said 10 grand and God said I have some of against you because and uh, especially told you to go to the bank and give it to him. The, did not go exactly did what I you did the essence. <clears throat> 